Ultimately, we look at where are you having your your alcohol? Is okay. it socially? Are you doing it socially with people, or are you doing it alone? You okay. know, and how can we set yourself up for success? Um, okay. Because as you know, afterwards, it's not recommended to drink for one year. Yes. Full stop. We just got our blood work done. Yeah, we did. And our doctors asked us, what are we doing to have such great blood work? Yeah. And you know what we told them? ProCare! Oh, my goodness. Yeah, we told them, like, yeah, we take ProCare every day because they have a multivitamin that you can just take one a day. Yes, exactly. They have a capsule and a chewable form. And not only do they have vitamins, but they also have calcium, calcium chews. Oh my God, they're so good. They're so delicious. It's like our own little sweet treat for the end of the night. It really is because they have the dark chocolate and they have the cinnamon roll. Yes, and I love the salted caramel and the dinner mint. All righty, we'll go to ProCareNow.com and use code OSLP at checkout to save some money. You guys ask us all the time, what is our favorite protein powder? Yeah, literally we see this question every day. And the answer is always devotion yeah oh my goodness i even use it this morning to make my own sweet treat for nighttime because it's just a, a brownie batter pudding and you literally just use one scoop and then milk or water and then i use it every morning in my profi it's so delicious oh my god i want one right now thinking of it seriously it's 20 grams of protein so go get yours now at devotionnutrition.com and use code oslp to save some money Welcome back, OSLP family! Welcome, welcome. You are listening to our Sleep Life podcast, and this is Kelly. This is Mahal. And... And, and, and. And, and, and. (laughs) We just want to let you know that nominations are open right now. Yes, they are. They're open for the Just Be You Bariatric Awards. It is the first ever. Mm -hmm. And we are so stoked because it is brought to you by us. That's right. I can't believe it. It's freaking our damn thing. Yes. Yes. And we did announce the... Uh, date and the location of the yes, show so because it is going to be a live in person show. It is. It is in Portland, Oregon. It's Portland, Oregon at the Aladdin Theater on yes. November 12th. And ProCare is our sponsor. Yeah, because you know how much we love ProCare. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're, I, I, we, that's all we take is just ProCare. Like legit. Like so, I took it this morning. So I took it last night. There you go. And I will take it tonight. <laughs> um, they were wonderful enough to sponsor the event. Mm-hmm. And I i mean, we just can't thank them enough because they yeah. see what we see in this event. Yes, they do. Which is that we are uniting the entire bariatric community into highlighting the people that are the most yeah, like inspiration. inspirational. Yeah. Like what like what's been helping this community? Like yeah. we should celebrate it because that's the whole point is like we want everybody to feel acknowledged <laughs> and that, have a voice. And have a voice. And the way to do that is to have an award show. So people yes. know that you're here because we're here. We're not going anywhere. Yes. And there may be an honorable mention seg- section. Yeah, maybe. For every person that is nominated. That's right. So nominate your butts off. So <laughs> no matter how big or how small your social media is, mm-hmm. you still need to nominate the people that inspire you the most. That's right. So I know. I, go over there right now. It's on, just at our freaking website. It's yeah. OurSleepBypodcast.com. Yep. Go to the award show seg- mm-hmm. section. It is at the top. If you're on a laptop, if you're on a phone, it is the three little lines. You click on that. You go down to the award show button and you scroll down a little bit. And then there's you just nominate right there. Eric it, calls that the hamburger button. Oh, it kind of does look like a hamburger. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just, just press the hamburger button. Hamburger button. <laughs> um, and then once you put all your nominations in, mm-hmm. we will get them. And we are going to categorize all of the top four. Top the four. top four for each, tw- for the 20, 20 categories, categories that, that we have. have. Nuts. Um, and then voting will start August 1st. August 1st. It's going to be open for two months for voting. That mm-hmm. way... Everybody has a chance. Mm-hmm. That, that is the only way we can think of mm-hmm. to make sure no one misses it. So if they're on vacation, you can still see it. You can still do it. Yes. So. And tickets for the live show go on sale June 1st. It might already be on sale by the time this airs. Yes. And if you put in your nomination and you put in your email, you may get an early email saying that 
Tickets are live, and right. then you get to go buy them early. You know, who so gets, go and nominate. But who also gets them early is our patrons, our benchies. So there's a couple of things that we're doing with our patrons this time mm-hmm. around, especially with the award show. Mm-hmm. So one, one of them that lives in the U.S. might be winning. Mm-hmm. to travel here during that time frame and be at the award show. Mm-hmm. So if you're a patron, that's $5 or higher. You're going to get entered into a raffle. Mm-hmm. And then you get first peek before everybody else is to buy the tickets. Yes. And well. not only that, but you get so much other amazing things on our Patreon. Mm-hmm. It, you get exclusive videos that that's what she said corner. Um, you get... The videos of our episodes 10 days early. That's right. You get episodes early. You get all sorts of stuff. And get there's dis- more. <laughs> but wait, there's more. There's always more. Um, <laughs> if you're on the $7 or higher tier, you get to be a part of our Benchies support group. That's our favorite. And our support group, that group is hands down the best we love them so much and they're there for us just as much as we are there Mm -hmm. for them so like i'm going through some shit because if you guys are watching the stories and shit eric's in the hospital Mm -hmm. as we're recording this we're in day eight yes so it's a long recovery and everybody's been so sweet like Mm -hmm. reaching out checking on us like Mm -hmm. that's what i love about this it's like it's a full support group yes all the way through and through yes so So go check that out Mm -hmm. and then a free way to support us is go over to our youtube page it right. is our sleeve life podcast. We are the only ones mm-hmm. and just click the bell and subscribe. It definitely means more to us than it does to you, but it helps <laughs> us and just, just do it. Well, yeah, because like you get episodes every Tuesday, every Tuesday, there's a new one that drops for the yes. YouTubers. So go yes. check that out. Yep. And especially if they want to watch it because the backgrounds that we have going on right now, <laughs> they are amazing. For this episode amazing. is amazing. And yes. you won't know that if you're only listening. Yes. So go over to YouTube. <laughs> so without further ado, That's as right. I like to say, let's introduce our interview today. It is Miss Tamisha. And she is a not only a bariatric patient, mm-hmm. but she is a bariatric therapist. Yes. So welcome on the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I know we definitely have some trippy backgrounds going on. I know. Yes, we do. It's so fun. I, it, my eyes don't know where to look. <laughs> <laughs> it's like connect the dots between all of them. Uh huh. It That's is. That's what our viewers can see, right? Connect yeah. The dots. <laughs> yeah. So you'll need to go over to YouTube to, to I know. watch. And it. I've already done the dot thingies a couple times. Like. <laughs> <laughs> So tell us a little bit about your bariatric journey and where it started. Sure. So we all have that aha moment, Mm -hmm. that moment where we realize that life is bigger than just us Mm -hmm. and life is worth more having us in there in the present moment. And my aha moment was my two-year-old wanted to play ball and I couldn't run with him. Mm. And, um, and we all have that story, right? The, the story that's, that pulls at your heartstrings. Mm -hmm. And, um, and at that time I was uh, a little bit over 300 pounds. My highest recorded weight from the doctors was 312. Okay. Um, And so I walked into the bariatric um, center at 302 pounds. And um, and I have a, a whole history of bariatrics. My mother had the lap band. My okay. uh, father-in-law was ruined wide, and my grandfather-in-law was sleeved. Oh, yeah, all, all of them. them. I love it. <laughs> all of them, but all of which um, did not have that adhereness. And so there was um, a significant regain with all of them. Okay. And um, and so I was under the impression that bariatrics just doesn't work, right? When you see mm-hmm. that, when you're accustomed to it, you just assume that the surgery doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Okay. But what it, what slapped me in the face is it works if you work it. Yeah. This is a tool that can easily be manipulated mm-hmm. um, if our head work isn't up to the standard. So walking in, I said, I'm going to give this my absolute all because it's, it's more than me. It's for my son now. And if I don't do something, I can't walk him down the aisle at his wedding Mm. or watch him graduate high school, you know? Mm. 
So, um, I, I ended up losing about 60 pounds on my, uh, pre-op journey. Wow. Yes. Which is really exciting. Uh, I was ruined wide in September of 2021. So I'm, I'm about seven months out, seven or eight months out. Very cool. I currently stand at 175 pounds. Wow. That's incredible. That's impressive. So exciting. And this journey, if it's not for our community support, I I feel very alone in this journey and it mm-hmm. wasn't for the people around us. So mm-hmm. hats off to you, my friends, Aww, first and thank foremost, you. for making it a safe space for our community. Mm-hmm. Thank Aww, you. We appreciate that, that. Yeah, that means a lot because that was our goal. The whole intent yep. was that we didn't want, if we affected one person and they didn't feel alone, mm-hmm that we did our job yep so yep. and we just keep affecting that one person over and over and over and over I'm again cool with it. So, <laughs> we love it and, and you made it okay right mm-hmm. like you fought those stigmas and you put a label on it that this is okay yeah mm-hmm. it is and for that give yourself all of the credit in the world oh thank you you're yeah. so sweet thank you because it's just so <laughs> i get so angry when people get mad like are annoyed because someone had weight loss surgery it's like what why do you care? Like they're helping their health. Like, well, and it's nothing to be angry or ashamed no. or think anything negative about because it is it it helps people in the way that they need it to be helped. Right. For me, it was I was bedridden. I couldn't walk on my own mm-hmm. for yeah. more than 10 to 15 minutes. That's an issue when you're 30 years old. Yeah. That should not be your life. No. No. And so it helped me regain my life. I get to be in the gym. I get to do all of these things that I never thought I was going to be able to do again. And Mel has a son. Yeah. And you're going to be there, just like you said, Mm -hmm. like for his wedding and to walk in. Grandkids and play. And yeah, I want to do all the things. so fun. Yeah. Well, I think like. I was talking to my husband and, um, you know, we both. We both enjoyed overeating and Mm -hmm. binging, and that was Mm -hmm. our relationship dynamic. Mm -hmm. And not a lot of people talk about what happens afterwards. Yeah. You know, that's why we see that divorce rate at over 50%. If one, if one significant other gets the surgery versus the other, because you have to shift how you bond with that person. Yes. It changes things. and And I told him, you know, at 300 pounds, I was as happy as can be sitting at the bottom of the Eiffel Tower, looking up and watching everything. Everybody, until oh. I was able to climb those stairs and experience it from the other side. Yeah, this is you know at, at your weight. This is how life is. Mm-hmm. You know, you're happy as can be living your life until you realize that there's more that life can give you. Mm-hmm. Oh, I like how you said that yeah. because it, that's what it is. It's like you think, oh, you're you're fine, you're happy. Like I didn't realize, like I was like not happy until afterwards and i was mm-hmm. like oh there's mm-hmm. a whole different world over here mm-hmm. if you can uh walk a little faster and mm-hmm. fit into things like there's like a whole yep. new like, like concept like going on rides yeah like i mean i never airplanes. realized how fun going on rides was until after and i was like what do i have to lose yeah like Okay, if I die on the ride, I die on the ride. I I had a good run. Like, (laughs) at least I died having fun. Like, because my thought was like, I didn't want to die on the ride. Like, I always thought of the worst thing possible. And so that kept me on the ground. And I was like, no, I'm always the picture taker. I don't like rides, Mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. That was always my thing. And now I'm like, no, I want to live my life. I want to, as you like, very well put it. I don't want to be on the ground looking up at the Eiffel Tower being okay with that. Yeah. I want to experience life. And I'm sure, like, as you said, you felt the same way. Yeah. And that's that comes down to our aha moment. Mm-hmm. We stop belittling our experiences and we start taking life Life by the balls, right? Isn't that the quote? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> taking life by the balls. And, and that's what we deserve in life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yep. I almost... And, and I compare bariatrics in, in a different view, but just for the population to understand. I compare bariatrics to substance abuse because it's still that addictive mm-hmm. behavior lining. It is. And food is one of those. Um, it's actually the, the hardest substance to go away from because we need it every day to survive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, this, and I compare bariatrics to suboxone, right? Because it it suppresses that urge in your mind, but those addictive behaviors are still there. What is suboxone? What's that? 
it's it's a it's a um, drug that you take to help suppress those reward sensors okay. for when you the the substance. Got it. Got okay. it. Okay. That's the same as bariatrics, right? Like we mm-hmm. still have that addictive behavior. It's just suppressed those reward systems. Mm-hmm. And you know, you can still take that that illicit substance, but you're not going to get the reward. You know, mm-hmm. so it's yeah. that I compare that to just for the population to go, oh, I get it now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause you wouldn't ever berate somebody who was addicted to heroin or cocaine or something, you know, a drug, you would never berate them for getting, taking a medication or doing a surgery. So say there was a surgery out there to take away or suppress that urge to take drugs. I'm sure they would love that. No one would berate anybody for doing that surgery. So why is bariatric surgery And they also also give praise to the people that go and get, like, help and, Mm -hmm. like, go to the support groups Mm -hmm. and do the damn thing that's Mm -hmm. really hard work. But yet we don't. We're we're still shamed, Mm -hmm. even though we're doing the same thing. It's just with food. (laughs) Like, Mm -hmm. it's so dumb. It's an interesting way of looking at things. It is, yeah. (laughs) Yes. It's, it's hard. And, and we look at it from a culture standpoint, right? Like no one bats an eye at somebody going out to dinner. Mm-mm. They say, welcome and enjoy your experience, yep. you know, or, or try the gray stuff, you know, with beauty and the beast, yep. you know, it's delicious. Um, but we, we have this culture that there's a food dynamic and until we start breaking and, and being okay with just sitting and being with everybody's presence, it's not going to go away. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Weird. It's very hard. I know that, right. And I know we get this question a lot or we talk about this a lot, um, like dealing with it after surgery. So like Mm -hmm. you're never, it's never going to be, you never go into a restaurant ever again. It's never going to be Mm -hmm. that you never go to a birthday party and there's not cake. Like there's always going to be those things readily available because it's legal. And that's why it's harder for us. (laughs) Yes. It was very hard. It's not only legal, but it's a priority, yeah. right? Like when you when you go to somebody's house, you bring a dessert mm-hmm. or you bring a bottle of wine or what have you because it's appropriate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Those celebrations are all surrounded around food. Yeah. That was my first birthday after surgery, which was like I was less than a month mm-hmm. out of surgery at that point. And I remember saying, I want to do something that's not dinner. I don't want to do a celebration around food because I'm not eating like everybody else. Right. And so I don't want to expect other people to be like leery around me or like worry about what they're eating. I'm like, I want to do an experience. And we ended up going paint throwing. It was um, so much fun. Yeah. We had a blast. Everybody was painted from head to toe and it was just, it was the most fun. And, and I never done anything like that for my birthday. Mm Mm-mm. And I realized I never would have gotten the chance had I not had surgery or thought Mm -hmm. of doing things like that. Mm -hmm. It was always food. Mm -hmm. And with the tool, it made us be like, oh, I don't really need food. I just uh, let's go hang out and do something. (laughs) Yeah. Let's go have a party. Have an experience together. Let's just go hang out. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of this and we see a lot of this as a learned behavior. Mm -hmm. Right. So like your parents would say, finish your plate before Mm -hmm. you can have dessert Mm -hmm. or you can't get up from the table or, you know, you're going to end up having leftovers for breakfast if you don't finish your meal now. Mm -hmm. And a a lot of the psych evaluations that I do, I really go into what was your food culture. Okay. And and we're seeing that it's that reward system because Mm -hmm. you're doing good by eating your whole plate. Mm hmm. And we suppressed our our hunger hormone for so long. That's interesting. Yeah. My, I remember my mom was, she was like that, but she wasn't like that. She wasn't like, if we said that we were hungry, she's like, that's fine. You can get up, but you're not getting dessert. Mm-hmm. So there's, is, there's the reward. Yeah. yeah. So she never made us finish our plate. But of course, as kids, we we want dessert. So then she, you want to finish never, your plate. She, she said so, it without saying she it. She said it without saying it. Yeah. Now, my godmom, she was adamant. She they would not get up from the table until they had finished their plate. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Well, that comes as a whole culture thing, though. That's a poverty thing, too. Like, mm-hmm. the whole point of that saying is because they didn't know what the next meal was going to be. So you better finish your plate now mm-hmm. is the biggest deal. Like, it, it really stems from, like, the early 1900s, 1800s. Like, that's the problem. Mm-hmm. So they had the big families. And even I, like, was w- listening to this podcast about, like, the fact that they had so many people because 60% of children would die by the time that they were, like, seven. So that's why they had huge families. Jesus. They also didn't cut kid, uh, boys' hair until uh, like seven or eight because they didn't know you're going to be around any longer. So the once you hit the age gap, then you would have jeans and you would have your hair cut. Wow. Isn't that crazy? And you yeah. would only take one photo when you were bored and one photo after you've died. Yep. That's it. Crazy. That, but with that insane. time frame, right? We have our our um ghrelin hormone. Yeah. That mm-hmm. says eat when you have to eat. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, so now you're eating until you're until the whole plate's gone. Mm-hmm. No matter yeah. what, when you when the ghrelin mm-hmm. goes off. Mm-hmm. I like that name. Our, our damn ancestors. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> we'll blame them. That's right. Because well, it's a trickle down. It is a fact. Yep, because you learned it. I mean. So our parents learned it from their parents. So they taught it to us. And then by doing things like this, we're breaking. Yeah, that, we're tr- the cycle. That cycle. Right. And we're now getting into the fact of like, you know, of course, we've been through diet culture and all of that, too. Um, but we're now understanding like you just because you take a big portion doesn't mean you have to finish it. Yes. And I'm still I'm still dealing. I still deal with that. Oh, yeah. One hundred percent. It feels weird. It feels very weird. Yeah. Because I look at my plate and I'm like, well, because like I stay with I'm, I'm I'm with my boyfriend a lot and he is an excellent cook. And so my eyes are always bigger than my stomach and I always put more on my plate than I need. And then I'm like, well, I don't want him to think that I didn't like it. So especially in the beginning when we were like kind of new, yeah. I was like, well, I, I mean, I could eat a little bit more. <laughs> the weird thing is, is he's had weight loss surgery. So I don't understand why I thought like that, but I was just ingrained in you. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, I don't want people to think I'm like, don't like their food or mm-hmm. I don't like them or their house. And we need to break that type of thinking. Yes. That it's okay to food, throw food away. Exactly. Or to not finish a full plate. Yep. And we're setting our kids up for success. The next yes. generation is setting up for success. Mm-hmm. Yes. 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 So. And that's what we definitely need to focus well, on. Well, trying to making that normal. It's like, hey, like, you don't have to have fast food. Like, mm-hmm. you can just eat the things in your house. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, definitely. there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So what are some of, like, the top topics that you find when you're speaking with patients um, in therapy? Sure. So I primarily do psych assessments. So I go over, um, you know, the standardized. And the reason why I got into psych assessments is because I remember being a therapist and going into my psych assessment and being scared shitless, Mm -hmm. right? And people are going to go into my deepest, darkest thoughts Mm -hmm. and and are they actually going to get it? Because to me, this was a life or death. This was no longer about me. This was me being able to be the mom that my son deserved. Mm. And are they going to feel that passion that I have for my life? Mm -hmm. And and I think that's a a common ground. You know, if people, um, although they're experienced in the field, it has that person-centered approach that do you, do you get me? Yeah. And so that I be, I became a bariatric therapist to give back to the community and say, it's okay. I get it. I, I was right there where you are and we'll walk hand in hand together. Oh, so nicely always, done. And I always send my emails with, I can't wait to watch you shrink Aww. because that's ultimately what it is. It's a community. It's a basis. It's, it's family. Yeah, and it is. Family. But we are. We're yeah. one big dysfunctional Brady Bunch family. <laughs> oh, hell yes. yes, we are. Yes. <laughs> um, so the the few major points that come out in therapy is um, depression, mm-hmm. depression and suicidality, because this isn't something that anybody talks about. And that goes hand in hand with the overwhelming feeling. Right. So think about it when you have your first kid and you're you're given this life and you're like, 
what what is this it's it's looking at me right <laughs> no one knows what they're doing with parents we're just faking it till you make mm-hmm. it and hope that we don't like destroy this human being mm-hmm. exactly you know, we've read all the books, we've listened to all the podcasts, we've been through all three of our dietitian reviews, you know, we belong to that wonderful support Facebook group that <laughs> is third in every way, you know, and, um, and so obviously we're set up for success, right? Yeah, debatable, right. you know, everybody's journey is different. And until you're, you're dumping for the first time in the bathroom and you feel like you're, you know, everything is morphed mm-hmm. that's when you start realizing i need more help yeah. yeah and i am overwhelmed and it's like this fresh baby that i have no idea what to do with mm-hmm. you know and, and i wish that there was like a bariatrics for dummies or what to expect when you're expecting you know oh, i think there actually is a bariatrics for dummies if there's not we oh. need to make one stat <laughs> i i believe i've seen one i don't know if it's real but I kind of want to Google it right now, just right. a little bit. Just I'm just gonna. You can Google while we you talk. guys talk. I'm gonna Google. You're such a nerd. We need somebody, and we need somebody we to do. say this is okay, you know. And um, and that's that's what you guys are doing, and that's why I applauded you is because you're you're making it so it's okay to speak about this. Yeah. Because you know we, the surgeons gave us what we wanted, right? They cut out our stomach, they rerouted our intestines, they gave us a lap band. So, and we're down 125 pounds. Mm-hmm. So why aren't you happy? Yeah. We, right. We, we gave you what you wanted. What mm. more do you want? And it's well, like, that's not that easy. <laughs> it's not. It's not easy. Like, mm-hmm. what What else do I want? I want to love myself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. I love her, but I have no idea who she is. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, and no one talks about that. And that comes with grief. Yeah. That comes with loss. And that comes with depression. Mm-hmm. And And, you know, studies have shown that there is a 50% increase in self-harm and suicidal behavior between the years of three and four after pediatrics. Interesting. And and within that time, we start seeing plateaus. We start seeing regains and stalls, you know? That makes sense. Yeah. And so does does that equal your worth, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And we, we associate our weight with why we were depressed before, Mm -hmm. you know, if I could only lose weight, I would be happier. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you've lost the weight and you still don't feel good. Right. What else? Yeah. So why aren't we talking about that? I, I, I think because a lot of the times, and I know from personal experience, I regained Mm -hmm. and I didn't want to talk about it. I felt like a failure. I felt like I had, that I was giving this persona of being a, bariatric podcaster and i thought well i should know this why don't i know this i'm failing at this and i don't understand why and so i kind of felt myself pull back like i was doing the podcast and i was posting and i was doing videos and things like that but being actively and mentally in the community was really hard because i had to face what was going on. And they're two different things. They are. They're very two different things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think from me doing that, I can feel that from other people. Mm -hmm. When you start to regain, you start to feel like you're a failure and you drop off the face of the earth because Mm -hmm. if nobody's seeing it, it's not happening. Or then you don't have to listen to anybody say anything about it yeah and then you get depressed because i was i've been in a depressed state excuse me for a few months now i mean probably probably let's be honest it's been like a year that i've been in a kind of a depressed state (laughs) because i don't know what i'm doing right yeah and I had all the therapy before i had the nutritionist appointment we've talked to therapists on here but until you are actively in therapy, like during, I don't think that I think that's where the work comes into play, but it's not talked about enough. No, not at all. 
Not at all. Like we all need the help. Like mm-hmm. I needed the help. Mm-hmm. I never reached out for the help. And that's the deal. Like, I'm, I don't feel, I'm not going to say I'm lucky. Cause like, I only kind of believe in luck, but like, somehow i was able i only kind of believe i do because like we do we because we do a lot of the work ourselves to put us in those situations Mm -hmm. so that's kind of the deal is like because i've done all the research and because i was very like i don't know like i just kind of like always made sure like my numbers were normal that i didn't have to worry (laughs) i know we're gonna pause for a second because i looked over and i was trying to figure out what was purple on (laughs) melanie's hand she has a flosser stuck in her ring on the back of her hand. That's where I put it so I didn't lose it. <laughs> so you brought it into the podcast. I was flossing my teeth before I came down. Proper hygiene, sponsored by Delta Dental. Like... <laughs> Oh my god. Hey guys, I, I oh floss my, my teeth, yo. Oh I my do. god. Okay, so I've relieved her of her flosser. Let's get what back is to that it. dentist from um, oh, so Fairly good. Odd Parents? You know that um that old cartoon. I like that cartoon. My shiny oh. teeth in me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Mel's gonna sing that every time she flosses now. <laughs> this would be so good. Um, <laughs> see intrusive thoughts. Now I keep picturing like the cartoon of Timmy Turner. Like, oh. <laughs> <singing> <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh my god! I'm sorry. I had to pause. You're you there. fine. You're totally fine. Pause. But no, but I've been able to, because I think it's because I like numbers so much mm. that I did track for so long because mm-hmm. I was just like, oh, this is cool. And even when like I hit my lowest, I was like, oh, like it's be- like I know why I'm not losing anymore because I, I saw myself. I watched the numbers. Mm-hmm. That's the deal. Like I know my if I don't track, that's where I lose it because I'm mm-hmm. like, I saw like, oh, I can literally just not work out a lot and still kind of eat a little shitty and now I can just maintain here mm-hmm. and I was I perfected that and I now know how to do that but then Jimmy John's came in the picture we all know mm. and that's what killed me was I was ordering it every day and you can't do that you can't do that <laughs> you can't do that if you're not working out that was the problem mm-hmm. I stopped working out and so I could not have Jimmy John's in my life if I worked out then I could have it a couple times a week and not have a problem so I learned how to maintain but I also learned that I I like to avoid things as well no <laughs> no none and, of us are avoiders right <laughs> not at all and what I would avoid is tracking all of a sudden the tracking would just immediately stop once I mm-hmm. knew, once I felt a little fluffy, I was like, oh, shit, I don't want to look. Not yep. going to look, not going to look. And then all of a sudden I didn't look for a few months. And now I gained the, I gained that 12. That's They all say that's normal. I was very freaking out because, like, I stay around 189, 191, basically, right in that little cushion. Mm-hmm. And then I got up and then now I'm back down. It's just yep. you stay in that little window and yep. it, it is OK to stay in that window. Just don't harm yourself, guys. Like, this is normal. Yeah. Normal. But I think a lot of people don't realize that it's normal because I didn't either. We didn't realize it was normal. I was like, oh, that's normal. This 12 to 15 pounds. Okay, cool. But when you don't know, then you start freaking out and you start reeling like in your head. Well, you start beating yourself up. up. Yeah. And it's all internal. Right. And it's all, well, I shouldn't be eating this. And then you restrict and then, Mm -hmm. you know, then you binge and it's Mm -hmm. a cycle and you continually go back to those old habits because you're freaking out. Right. And you don't know what's going on. And it sounds like it's because the root of the problem was never dealt with. Right. Correct. Well, we also, we get the microscope, right? Like we're so involved on social media mm-hmm. and all of these places where it's all rainbows and unicorns. Mm-hmm. And, you know, um, it, it's hard for those who make a living off from social media to post the bad things. Because right. that's not what societies or brands want to see. Mm-hmm. They just want to see rainbows and unicorns. And that is not but, realistic. Nope. <laughs> nope. Spoiler alert, they're just as crazy pants as us. Yeah. 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 You know? Everybody has a little crazy in them. Oh, 100%. 100%. We have more than normal, me and Mel. Yeah. But that's, that's fine. beside the point. I um, feel that. <laughs> you have to be crazy to be a therapist. Yeah. Well, no. yeah. <laughs> or curious. Or very curious because I remember watching the Hannibal Lecter with my dad when I was younger. Yeah, I that's where I love horror movies. Um, and it makes sense like it started when I was young watching this stuff with my dad. Mm-hmm. But I remember being like, I would love to understand 
why he wants to do that to people. Mm-hmm. I'd like to talk to him. And my dad was like, no, <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was like, no, I think that'd be really interesting to figure out like what makes him tick, like what what's going on in there. Well, and that's why I find episodes like this so interesting because I want to know why we do the things we, we do. do. Right. Mm-hmm. Especially surrounding food, because yeah. there's some people that can have a completely normal relationship with food. They don't overeat they don't have a problem with it it's it's a way of fueling themselves they don't really think about it yeah and then there's people like the bariatric community and i'm talking about me um that think about food all day every day all day long and it's so interesting to me that there can be this two different types Mm -hmm. and it's like what makes us think about food all day long Right. So everybody's got something, right? Mm -hmm. So just because our something is food doesn't mean that these people on the outskirts don't have something. Yeah, Mm -hmm. that's a good point. Everybody has something. Ours is just we bond over food Mm -hmm. and that's our relationship standpoint. Um, But, you know, we also get that reward factor from food. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's that addictive behavior. It's that ghrelin hormone. It's the whole nine yards. It says, I want to keep doing this. Let's keep the happiness going. One. Right. With that pleasure center is like going on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so that's why we have a lot of transfer addiction because everybody needs something. And some people's are that healthy going to the gym, releasing that stress. Whereas ours is let's binge eat in the kitchen. Mm. Everybody has their monsters. Mm. I like how you put that. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. Cause it's true. Everybody does have their monsters. Some yeah. are a little bit worse or a little bit smaller. They just sit in the corner and stare at you. And then there's others that are big, scary monsters that live in your closet. <laughs> just oh, saying. my God. <laughs> so your job is you make like the assessment, like the things that like you ask them before they go into surgery. Yeah. So what kind yeah. of questions are you guys asking? Because I know mine was a 15 minute phone call. So oh, I'm curious. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That hurts my heart, right? So yeah. I, um, I, I probably spend a little bit too much time with my patients. Okay, and I do that because I've been through it, and mm-hmm. I know that this is a process. And I, I, I'm gonna sound super social work corny, but their life is worth my time. I like I it. will make sure that they are mindset ready because uh, it, such as if they get gastric bypass, there's not going to be a revision. There's not going to be a take two. Right. You know, this is fair you're in it, mm-hmm. you know, and yeah. you, uh, you know, you have chances if, if, you know, you're, you're non-compliant afterwards to lose the weight, but it's harder. Mm-hmm. So let's set yourself up for success. So, um, I actually, I printed out a little Ooh. copy of what specifically categories, yeah. because I'm used to just like doing it on the regular that sometimes I, I don't go back and forth. So, uh, within my practice, I specifically go by the ASMBS guidelines, which okay. is the American society for metabolic and bariatric surgery. Those are kind of like our, our nationals when it comes to bariatrics. Okay. Last time that they updated their guidelines was with in 2016 for the psychological evaluations oh. and all the psychological evaluations are recommended. They are not a requirement. They could be a requirement for the insurance, but as far as the surgery itself, that's why if you were to go out of the country, they don't require gotcha. a psychological evaluation. Mm. So we're kind of the wild west in that standpoint. Mm-hmm. So, um, of we course we are because it's mental health. So why wouldn't we be? Right. Why yeah. wouldn't we just standardize making sure that people are OK? Yeah. 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 It just happens to be their life. Yeah. No big deal. Nothing big or yeah. anything. No. No big deal. Um, so we go over just your demographics, you know, just the chatting about your occupation, your height, your weight, who you are, if you, what your marital status is. Um, we go into your weight history. So any weight loss attempts, um, anything like environmental factors, any stressors, anything that could correlate to why your weight is the way it is. Because we all have baggage, and until that head work is dealt with, which doesn't necessarily mean that 
that you're going to be put on hold. It just means let's talk about it and let's get you set up for success. Okay. I like that. I know yeah. people are scared that if they don't answer these questions just right, that then now, boom, they can't have There's surgery. There's been a few posts in our benchies where they're like, oh, I'm so nervous. My, mm-hmm. my psyche valve is tomorrow or whatever. And it's yeah. like, you're fine. Just yeah. be yourself. They're just making sure that you're not going to go crazy. You're not going to hurt yourself or others. Yeah. And so um, the the specific red flags that will, that per the ASMBS, will put you on hold automatically is if you've had an eating disorder within the last six months. Okay. Okay. Which makes sense. um, Yep. So like the anorexia, the bulimia, the purging. Um, If you've been suicidal or hospitalized within the past year. Okay. Um, and if you've had any psychosis in okay. the past year. Can you kind of go into psychosis yep. a little bit? Sure. Um, you know, it's it's that um imaginary belief, that mindset change that, you know, people think of it as tinfoil hats and hearing aliens. Okay. I hate to use that terminology, but that's how people associate. Mm-hmm. Um ugh, it, it breaks my heart that that is the association with it. Because mm-hmm. the People could be stabilized and living their life with that psychosis Mm -hmm. and on a great, um, you know, regimen of medication and psychiatric help. Um, So please don't, please don't think about what you see on TV when it comes to psychosis. Um, But that, that is a red flag and and we'll have a discussion about it. Um, I can only speak for how I perform psych evaluations, but I am always, uh, transparent, you know, I'll, I'll go into questions. Um, you know, can you tell me a little bit more? And, you know, I do just want to let you know that this is the route that we're going. Nice. Um, so I always just make sure that people are very transparent because it's terrifying. Mm-hmm. You know, you worked your, your ass off mm-hmm. for this chance to sit down with a, with a therapist to go over the last thing that you need to do this life-changing surgery. And then now all of a sudden you're put on hold for something that you said. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it can be hor- horrifying yeah. and terrifying all at the same time. Exactly. Um, and so we go over any mental health history, any diagnoses. Um, I specifically ask what your self-care regimen is because that shows that you're taking the time for yourself. Okay. And as moms, it's hard to do. As family members, working human beings, it's hard to take time for yourself. But that shows that you are invested in yourself. Okay. So, make sure um, that I ask about that. I go into some psychometric testing um, and that's where you get asked a thousand questions and asked to rate on a scale of zero to four or what have you. Oh, I hate those. Um, no offense. Yeah. But man, yeah. those take fucking forever. <laughs> they do. Forever, There's man. like fatigue where I'm like, I don't care anymore where I'm going to just start picking the same number. Yep. <laughs> that's a real yep. thing. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And it's so that's the ASMBS. They require us to do some psychological evaluations to okay. make sure that all of our T's are crossed and all of our I's are dotted, which it, it definitely hurts my heart because it can be easily manipulated. Right. You know, if I'm mm-hmm. asking you if you're suicidal and you say no and you actually are, like that's a whole different story. I'd right. rather spend time in having an open conversation with who you are and get to know you. Mm-hmm. Well, and it's safer overall because if you're suicidal, you go through this surgery thinking, this is going to fix everything. This is going to fix why I'm, I'm suicidal. suicidal. Right. That's not necessarily true. Right. And so those problems that you have that is that are making you feel suicidal is they're still going to be there. It's just going to be masked for a little while while the high of losing weight is running, is through, running through you. But yeah. as soon as that stops all those problems are still there. Yeah, because you're still you. You're just you smaller. Exactly. Exactly. All the trauma and confusion you've been through is still there. Yeah. Yeah. The the physical things like diabetes, things like that, that can change. Yeah. The things that are mental up in your brain, like I had depression and anxiety before I had surgery. I still have depression and anxiety. That is still present in my life. The surgery did not change that. So you have to be, I just want to put it out there that you need to be honest with the person that is doing your psyche. Yes, please. Because if you're not honest with them, 
you could put yourself in harm's way and that's not going to help anybody. Yeah, they're only as good as what the information that they have. Exactly. So don't lie to your professionals. Like and, That's why the HIPAA okay. law is there. So people can't just yeah. get into your records whenever you like. Yeah, want, and it's okay they want to, to talk. It's okay to talk it out. Because mm -hmm. there's some times where it's like, I'll have a depressing moment and in before and I would talk to a therapist and I would feel better. Right. Because I've talked it out. So those thoughts that were running through my head before aren't necessarily there anymore because I've talked it out and I've done mm. some work on it. Exactly. So, yeah. Well, sorry. And I talk. No. And I want to just piggyback just real quick, too, is people have to remember, I think everybody has some sort of form of anxiety or depression. Yeah. That's yeah. fucking normal as shit. So let's not act like none of us have it. It's just severities of it. <laughs> yeah. It's a it's a range. Yes. It's a range, my friend. And that can change from morning to evening. Yes, I mean, really, that's I mean, that's my mind day to day mm -hmm. like really good kind of crappy okay we're good again so yep. it can range daily weekly hourly whatever well because the covid taught that for dylan like mm -hmm. my son because now he's home doing school i'm home doing work eric's home because he's injured now we're all in the house and now dylan got to see the emotions how like morning can be different than evening mm -hmm. and night because all he saw was i just went to school <laughs> nothing and happened in the middle of the day. Nothing happened for eight or nine hours. But he's like, Mom, this is weird. I've seen you cry and laugh and be like totally fine in the same day. And I'm like, yeah, that's how that's life. And he's like, really? I'm like, yeah, mm -hmm. you can cry for a minute. To, and like all of a sudden you're like, not all of a sudden you're fine. It's just you got it out. And now we move on. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, that's how it works. I think with COVID, too, is actually kind of I don't want to say a blessing in disguise, but it kind of was because it really brought some mental health to the, the surface. surface. Yeah. Yes. Actually, it's New York just issued a um, um, state of crisis for the mental health pandemic for under the age of 18. Nice. Wow. Wow. Good for them. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing because I know like a lot of people like to pretend like it doesn't happen. I know. Like there's no such thing as depression, even though it is it's all medically there. there. Yeah. Um, but I think being in your homes and being around your family like 24 seven for months on end brought a lot of that depression, anxiety. It brought it all back because you weren't leaving your house. Yeah, there you was can't no, hide it anymore. There was no release that was happening as you mm -hmm. were like going out to drinks with your friends or, you know, going on a walk or like because at some portions it was like recommended that you weren't even outside walking. Right. So. <laughs> yeah uh, yeah it's good. I'm actually i just recently saw this post on facebook and uh, it was it was a sign that says um two years ago i asked for two weeks at home to get my house clean and then it says present day nope that wasn't the problem <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah 100%. Like, <laughs> i would totally uh, agree with that <laughs> yeah <laughs> So afterwards, we talk about um, if there's any substance abuse history. Okay. Um, substance abuse isn't necessarily a full stop. It's just what can we do to help support you? Um, because studies are now saying that those who had specifically ruined why there weren't studies done on sleeved just yet. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> we're newer. We're newer than our. I know, but still. <laughs> you are trend setters. Yeah, um, that's right. <laughs> There, the transference rate is 41 to 51 percent. Whoa, and that is a significant number. That's huge. So, that is a very high rate. Wow, yeah. uh, for uh, for substance wow. abuse, for substance for you, abuse, for RNY, for RNY. So, R &Y. okay, so what when you're when you're asking the questions about substance abuse, what would you even consider as substance abuse? Like so I, I personally do a severity of dependency scale. Okay. So I can look at and I specifically look at food and how that transference may happen afterwards. But substance abuse is technically classified as any, you know, illicit substances. Um, marijuana is technically considered a wah, substance. Wah. <laughs> um, tobacco and alcohol. Okay. okay. And what kind so, of alcohol use? I'm just curious. Well, because I had to fill this thing out for Eric and it's like one to two a week, two to yeah. three a week, seven to eight a week. And it's like, I don't know. Like, yeah, this is 
Crazy. I'm like, yeah. if I say that I have five drinks a night, is that too much? I'm I'm joking because I don't. I don't. We'll probably have a conversation. <laughs> yeah, you would. You 100 percent would. Well, it's it like it depends on the day, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, oh. and it does depend Birthday on the day. Birthday parties, bad days. I mean, it could go a little over one week or <laughs> to the next. <laughs> Well, ultimately, we look at where are you having your your alcohol? Is okay. it socially? Are you doing it socially with people or are you doing it alone? You okay. know, and how can we set yourself up for success? Um, okay. Because as you know, afterwards, it's not recommended to drink for one year. Yes. We'll stop. So, you know, and everybody is different, but that's kind of that recommendation. Yeah. Uh, we also look at your personality traits and that's to look at whether or not you're going to, how you're going to do with stalls mm. and how, um, of course we don't have this magic globe where we can look into the future, but that's why we do the testing to see how your body and how your mind handles these stressors okay. to see if you'll fall back to old habits. Okay. And it's not one size fits all. Mm. We're kind of to be honest, we're kind of just guessing our yeah. minds are so different mm-hmm. and, you know, any information that we can provide. Um, so then we go into cognitive functioning to make sure that you, um, your mindset is okay. And you can function at a normal human rate, which I don't think any of us actually can, but we kind of just <laughs> fake it till you make it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, so we do, I personally do something called the BIMS where I ask you to remember three words. I ask you what day, month, and year it is. And then I ask you what those three words were to show that there's no, you know, dementia going on or anything cognitive. Interesting. Um, yeah. And so, it, and this is something that I do. Um, it's, it, this isn't in the ASMBS guidelines, but I ask what your why is. Okay. You want this surgery and why is it important to you? Um, which I wish that, uh, that surgery centers did that more mm-hmm. and took the time to understand why this is important to us. Mm-hmm. You know, the psych person didn't ask me that, but Dr. Patterson did. So oh, okay. yeah. she asked me, I, my therapist. So I did, he, she had the 15 minute phone call. Yep. I went every, <laughs> every month for an hour for six months. So mm-hmm. I had a very thorough Mm-hmm. therapist she was awesome um i wish that i could just have stayed on with her throughout my journey but um she she asked me and it was very like apparent in like when she did ask me to find out like is it this for someone else mm-hmm. is this for you because i could i kind of get the feeling that it can happen to where it's like my husband wants me to have this surgery i don't want this surgery right Am I correct in that thinking? Yes. So we ask about any stressors. So any abuse history. Um, I personally ask if there's nobody around because I do telehealth, if they're safe in their home and they okay. feel comfortable. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm going to get a cough. So I'm going to be. <laughs> sorry, I didn't want to break any eardrums. <laughs> you're good. Um, but ultimately, it's just to make sure that you're safe and you're comfortable, and this is your specific decision, and that you're not. Um, I actually just had a woman. Um, she's she's a love. Um, she just turned seventy eight the other day, and she is going in for Rue and Why. Oh, we had to have a discussion because she was doing it because her mom always told her throughout her life that she was too big. Ah. And that she needed to lose weight. And if I could throat punch her mother, I probably would, because that is such a toxic yeah. thing to say. And it's such your such your loved ones up for just feeling like they're less than. Mm-hmm. And in no way, shape, or form they are. They are beautiful human beings. Mm-hmm. But that was their culture, yeah. right? And that's the learned behavior from her parents and their parents. Mm. And until that that corset age where we had to have that hourglass figure, mm-hmm. you know, where it's a learned behavior and we can only hope that we do better than those before us. Right. Yes. And that includes getting rid of diet culture. Yes. <laughs> Throw it out the yeah. window. I want to get rid of that because mm-hmm. I think that's another thing that I... I'm so sorry. Kelly it's Staples. They're calling uh-huh. me personally. Um, <laughs> sorry. Oh my God. My order is ready. Yeah, my order is ready. ready. My booklet for the summer shred down with the sleeve dietitian is is ready. ready to go. So I'm excited to to, mm-hmm. to get the phone call. Um, so 
I know with myself, because I know you didn't do a whole lot of dieting. Mm -mm. Um, I know for me, I was always looking for that next thing. Like I remember going, walking through the store and walking down the diet pill aisle, Mm. trying to figure out which one would work best. And I remember signing up for Weight Watchers on several occasions, trying to do keto when it was like Atkins. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I did everything in my power, including restricting and binging. There was Mm -hmm. because I wanted to lose weight so badly because I didn't feel like I was enough. Right. At Mm -hmm. the size that I was at. And that thought needs to go away. It's it's Mm -hmm. more about the thought of eating healthy. And this is fuel for our bodies. And I think we just need to get away from that thought process of constantly being on a diet, constantly trying to lose that five pounds. I'll start Monday, New Year's resolutions like that needs to go away. Yeah, very far away and never find its way back for the future generations, because it's so heart wrenching when I think back Mm -hmm. to what I thought about myself. And I still have those cycles. Of course. Where, you know, I think like, oh, you shouldn't be eating that. You don't deserve to eat that. Like you need to lose your regain. And Mm -hmm. I mean, we just talked with losing to blooming Michaela. She's Mm -hmm. she's amazing. And uh we just talked with her and it that changed my entire mindset, just having a conversation of why don't I deserve to eat yeah so i i was at the completely other end of the spectrum oh my yeah my mindset was they always make bigger pants that's where i was my family was big my big family i just assumed like oh well i'm just gonna be a big body person because my whole family's a big body person Mm -hmm. this is this makes sense this correlates yeah and i was like they'll always make a bigger size who cares yep oh i just made a breakthrough in my own head did you yeah (laughs) Tell the therapist. Okay. So, okay. Let me get comfortable on my couch. Um, So when I was younger, I was never thin, thin, like two of my sisters, but I wasn't like big. No, you were thin. And then I started gaining weight as I got older, Mm -hmm. um, hanging out with friends. You're, you know, you're teenagers and you're drinking and you're eating bad foods. Like that's just what you do. Yeah. And so, um, one, right. I I mean, I was 21. I was was 21. Um, so (laughs) I remember being living with my family still. So I was 21 living with my family in high school. (laughs) Um, And I remember my older sister who was very thin. She, she used to be very, very thin. She called me fat Mm. and I punched her. (laughs) And then all of my eating disorder stuff started happening. Diet culture started Mm -hmm. making an, imprint on me because i wasn't thin like her so right. why and she was the one that called you fat yeah so and you're like i want to be like her yeah yeah like i didn't mm-hmm. want to be like her but i wanted i didn't want to ever feel like that again right where i was wondering about my size right and if i was fat mm-hmm. well it sounds like it sounds like she labeled your worst fear mm-hmm. oh there you go no mm-hmm. oh man <laughs> <laughs> I love talking to therapists, but I hate talking to therapists at the same time. Oh, I'm sorry. You make us I, unpack I things. Same. No, it's good. I, I feel the same way. Yeah. It's, it's it's definitely good. And that's why it's good to go talk to a therapist because mm-hmm. then things we are lucky that we do get to have talk therapy yep. when we do episodes like this or, you know, talking about mindset, things like that. But a normal bariatric patient that doesn't have a platform of a podcast yeah you those are things that you would never unpack Mm -mm. if you're not talking with a a specialist exactly so go talk to a therapist (laughs) i uh, I always i always say and one day i'm going to get it cross stitched on a pillow is that everybody needs somebody to talk to Mm. and those who say that they don't are the ones that need it the most Mm. that is so true it's okay not to be okay. Yeah. I That's wish that was more out there. Yeah. We used to live in communities where we helped each other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Yep. We're, com- we're normally community bound, so it just doesn't make sense. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I think that's why the bariatric community has become as big as it is, because we are naturally drawn to communities. Mm-hmm. We're drawn to see people in that are like us. Yeah. Supporting like us. Yeah. Supporting us. Mm-hmm. Like you want to go and see, oh, they had the sleeve, too. Like, I'm sure you did the same thing before you had surgery. Like, you want to look up the people and see what their experience was because you want to be prepared for anything that is going to happen. Well, I had three people in my family that True. unfortunately True. regained a significant amount. But I also watched my mom eating an entire pint of Ben and Jerry's, multiple pints, because it slipped right down the band. Oh, yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. And they don't get dumping syndrome or anything like that. And, you know, it, the first few weeks I just felt awful with, with bypass because I was trying to figure out what I could eat and mm-hmm. what people settled well. And she said, well, why don't you just go get a pint of ice cream? That always works for me. Oh, oh no. So it's that, that mindset culture. So mm-hmm. although I was, I, I was seeking that community support, I was terrified because is this what regular community members do? No, mm, yeah, no, 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 no. Realize no. that real quick. Yeah. Yeah. No. Strong no. <laughs> yeah. that's, a, that's a strong nope. <laughs> no for me. Wow. That, nope. oh, it makes sense though. Why why they exactly. regained though? Because they manipulated their tool. Well, didn't Matt yeah. do the same thing? I mean, to an extent, he would um he would just hurt himself. He would just overeat. Yeah. Yeah. He would just force it down. Yeah. Her brother had lap band first. First. And then he recently got sleeved. Well, it's been over a year now mm-hmm. since he's been sleeved and he's done amazing on it. Yeah. He's so. like, this is so much better. Yeah. <laughs> Because it is. Because it, <gasps> it really teaches is. them, like, oh, you don't actually need those sizes of food. Because mm-hmm. what the lab band did, it, it, he just forced it through. But you can't do that with a sleeve or an R and Y. So no, you will physically you, make yourself sick. Exactly. And mm-hmm. and you'll be sick for a while. Mm-hmm. And you'll have multiple symptoms. It's not just the pain, you know? Yeah. Like, you're getting the sweats. You're getting the heart rate. You're getting the dumping. Like, you, you get all the things, yeah. man. So it really taught him... Oh, I have to be like portion things out and I have to really monitor what I'm eating and drinking and whatnot. And he told us several times, like he doesn't track his stuff, but he is doing the things because he knows he needs to do the things. Exactly. So and I was going to ask you, have you seen a correlation um, going back to the transfer addiction uh, between patients that drink earlier on having yeah. more of a problem with transfer addiction than patients that wait longer? So, uh, so it depends. What is the reason why they're drinking? Okay. So that that would be my first question is, are you drinking because it's socially or are you drinking because, you know, you're looking for that reward system or that um, pleasure sensor? Can it be both? It it could. Okay. And everybody's different, but that would be my, because there's no one, one hat fits all. If your doctor is recommending that you abstain from alcohol for one year, and you're bypassing that. Why? Why are you doing that? And so that okay. would be my question. But absolutely, you know, people want that reward system and that pleasure sensor. Yeah. You know, think a lot of people get addicted to the gym. Mm-hmm. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's a standardized. It's okay. Mm-hmm. You know, but it's still that transfer addiction or shopping. See, or- I think mine was a gym because I was starting mine was shopping because mine like um doing the two a days. That's mm-hmm. what I got into, and I loved it because you feel amazing all day <laughs> all day you're like whoo this is really cool I, actually, I ended up getting my um, personal trainer certificate because hey. yes because i was a, a gym goer yeah. um and it's funny how those addictions start mm-hmm. and you just dive deep into them mm-hmm. you do and like with for me the gym it's like i once i'm there i'm like i could be there for hours because i'm like mm-hmm. oh i just want to do all the things while i'm here yep and if that takes two hours i don't care Yep. I'll do it. And I did do that all the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was insane. Yeah, mm-hmm. yours is the uh, shopping. shopping. You had a shopping thing before, but I think this is definitely it enhanced. Went, it went like because she knows what I'm talking about. She she knows very well that you had you, you I shopped like to a shop. lot. She I just, loves I to like shop. To shop. I like new things. Mm-hmm. What I do n- love about oh. Kel, you just have to give her the look like I can't do anymore. And she'll be like, okay. Like she's not because I've been accustomed to everybody giving me that look my entire life, (laughs) (laughs) and I know why I shop. I I can pinpoint the exact reason why I shop is because I grew up poor, 
and mm-hmm. I didn't get the things that I wanted to get when I was a kid or even mm-hmm. a teenager. And oh. now that I can, I want to do that. Go buck and wild. so I, spo- I spoil everybody because <laughs> I like to buy gifts and I like to make sure that people have what they want to have. Um, mm-hmm. That's just mm-hmm. the way it is. Like my boyfriend's kids got AirPods for Easter. You got Dylan mm-hmm. AirPods. And I did buy him AirPods. Yeah. Well, that that is your love language. It we is. all have a love language. Yep. I, mm-hmm. I am definitely a gift, gift, gift giver. giver. Yep. And if I My. feel like you didn't like it, then I'm like, okay, what's the next thing I'm going to get you? <laughs> <laughs> Mine's hard. My love language with my husband is food. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and my husband, um, he's actually starting to think about the surgery. Oh, good. Yay. Really exciting. Um, you know, and he's very open and transparent. He is a giant dude, very muscular, big beard, bulky dude, but he just hit his, um, 350, 60 pounds, you know, Mm and it's increasing. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's, it's funny how we are inspirations for the ones that we love, Yeah, Mm -hmm. you know, and it just takes that one domino to start that healthy lifestyle. Exactly. Oh, just be that domino. I love that. Yeah, be that domino for someone else. Yeah. Yeah, that's why, like, when you're at the restaurant table and they ask for dessert and you just say no and just keep moving on, like, it's not a thing. Everybody else will say no. It starts to trend. So it's like, be the person. So what did you figure out was your love language after surgery with your husband if you couldn't have food? I don't know. You don't know. You're learning now. All right. Yeah. And it's okay not to know, you know, we, we still go out to dinner. Um, we're actually, it's, it's my birthday on Monday. So we oh. are, yes. Happy so, birthday. Um, thank you. And I live in rural New Hampshire. So nice. we are going to our local tiny little airport and we're getting, um, breakfast waffles. Very cute. And so we still, um, cause my son loves watching the little planes take off and touch down. Oh, and nice. it's like, it's, it's so sketchy that you can literally run out to the airfield. Like no one's talking. <laughs> like, like, there's no gate. Like you literally oh. like just book it. Um, and yeah, it's yeah. Welcome to New Hampshire. Right. I um, love it. I had it envisioned of me like, I'm going to Mexico. I know. <laughs> right. My son would be like, Oh, look. Like, oh, I didn't, uh, so, so I guess our love language is still food, but it's in moderation. There you go. Uh, okay. And he's starting to be really kind and start like doing the dishes and doing things like that because he knows that he can't do the food, you know, bringing home my favorite cannolis or anything mm-hmm. like that. So now it's active um, service is the next. It's kind of turning, morphing into the acts of yeah. service. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And huh. it's a- I really just want to make sure everybody knows that it's okay to have that conversation with your significant other. Yes. It's important. It's necessary. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. It, it definitely it's is. Okay to, it's okay to let them know that you need more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and I can may- vouch for that. I did not. Yeah. And I did not do that. And my com- first conversation with Erica was like, Hey, I didn't know I was going to need this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's how I approached it. I was like, I had no idea. <laughs> I always thought I had the healthiest relationship. And now that I'm out of it, I'm like, oh, no, we were real bad. <laughs> we were incredibly bad because <laughs> that conversation didn't even come to play. No, not at all. No. Oh, yeah. No. no. I was like, this is weird. I, I This is what I need from you now. It's not I, I need physical touch and I need compliments. I didn't know I needed that. And he's like, well, bear with me. Because like you've not like I've never had to like do these things with you. Mm. Like public affection was we've always did that part like hold hands or give kisses. But like I need like full on like compliments and Mm. knowing that you're liking what you're seeing. That's what I need to know. (laughs) Definitely. It's it's okay not to know and just be like, I need something, but I don't know what it is. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and just trial and error it because this is a brand new journey for all of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and sometimes you solve things as you're talking too. like, have you ever done that when you're talking to a friend or your Mm -hmm. spouse and you're just like, you're talking it out and you're like, oh, wait, now I understand what I was trying to do. Like, Mm -hmm. you're like, oh, I just needed to say it out loud. Like, I didn't know what I was going to say until the end of that anyway. So, Mm -hmm. because Eric's like, why did you even ask? I'm like, actually, you know what? I don't know why I did, but I think it's because I needed the talk part. <laughs> I just need to work my way around. Yeah, but out loud, mm-hmm. you know? So and it's what's just... really helpful is journaling. Mm-hmm. I keep <laughs> hearing that. <laughs> so we in the therapy community, 
we, we call that a resiliency. Okay. And it's literally how we can just word vomit and no one has to know. And I personally use a journal that's called burn after writing. And, um, mm-hmm. and I'm literally a, like going to set fire to the bitch after like, <gasps> That is so funny because yesterday I said the reason my biggest fear of journaling and diarying is the people finding it and using it against me later. Yeah. So, so what just, if you write it down and then just burn it after you're done? Yeah, that's what that's what she's doing. Yeah, like no, like but each page. Oh, like quickly. Yeah. Because yeah. oh, there's could. no. I mean, you can go back. And I mean, you make the it, rules, so if that's but you. yeah, I mean, if your whole thing is just getting it out and onto a page, mm-hmm. then just toss it. Yeah. Does like light it on fire. Even on your phone, right? If you have like a lock screen mm-hmm. or there's apps that, you know, you can go into secret compartments and mm-hmm. just, just get it out. Mm-hmm. It's, it doesn't do you any good being trapped in your head. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> oh, I keep hearing it. The journaling <laughs> thing. I'm, I've never been a good journaler. You've never tried. I, I did try as a child. <laughs> I mean, and it sounded so like, though. dear diary, Jeff looked really cute today. That's, that's, that's yeah. so different, though. That's <laughs> I know. <laughs> that's day-to-day diary. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's like, I never know how, what to write. So then I end up sitting there and there's nothing there. And I don't yeah. know how to get it from my head and what I'm feeling onto a page. Well, think, that's why I connect more with therapy. Well, and I think that's why you're going to do really well with the actual... Um, the summer shred thing with Jamie mm-hmm. because she has prompts. Yeah. They prompt you. That, yeah. So there is help to like, so that way if you don't know what to write, you'll have some help. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm happy to announce that I did send an email to a therapist today. She did. For divorce, because I feel like I need to deal with that before I can deal with the rest of it. Mm-hmm. So I am excited to start doing the work internally that I have put off for the last year and a half maybe more i know i'm so proud of you 15 years it's fine it's, it's fine. fine i'm good it i'm good matter. i swear as long as you do it yeah as long as you make that call yeah it could be now it could be a month from now but at least you did it though. exactly yeah all well, right thank you so much for being here is there anything else you'd like to add um you know just make sure that you get somebody to talk to whether or not it's your dog your chinchilla i don't care <laughs> Find somebody. Everybody deserves to have somebody to talk to. Or message us. I like that. We're always there. Yes. Yes. And we'll have your Instagram linked below Mm -hmm. um, for everybody who's wondering. And then, as always, we tag you on Instagram so everybody can find you. So we're we're super excited for people to get to know you from our side. Yeah. Thank you so much for, like, hanging out with us and, like, um, you know, unpacking all of the crazy over here. Yes. (laughs) Yes. It's helpful. Sure. Super helpful. <laughs> thank you both. And I, I can't thank you enough for what you do for our community. And just, I know I keep saying it, but you really do break the stigmas and it's needed. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we appreciate you. We do. All right. Well, we love you guys and, and we, we will see, see you next time. Bye. Bye.